Hey everyone, welcome back to another dividend investing video. In today's video, I aim to come to a conclusion once and for all to that age old debate amongst dividend growth investing circles Coca Cola or Pepsi. And I'm not talking about which soft drink you prefer, but which company is a better investment from the perspective of a long term value minded dividend growth investor? Which one's a better buy today? These are two iconic companies some of the most well-known brands in the world, and they both have been paying a growing dividend for a long time. In fact, both companies are considered to be dividend kings, an elite group of companies that have been growing their dividend for over 10 years. In the video today, I will briefly look at both of these stocks and compare them. I'm going to go over a couple polls I took on social media, including some of your comments, and I'm going to provide you with our dividend growth income, fair value estimates, and my ideal buy price for both stocks. So let's get right into this. I'm Nick, and this is the Dividend Growth Income Channel. Thank you for joining me today. I'm not a financial advisor or guru. I'm just a regular guy who wants to share my love of dividend growth investing and building financial independence with passive income. If you could, please do me a favor, smash the like button, and subscribe to keep up with future videos. This helps us out more than you can imagine with the algorithm so we can bring you more quality dividend investing content. The first thing we need to consider is that these companies are a little different. While Coca-Cola is purely a beverage play, Pepsi is also in the consumer packaged foods business, mostly snack foods, all the ones you know and like, like Doritos and Cheetos and Quaker Oats and so on. So they're both definitely junk food type investments and they're direct competitors. Brand loyalty is huge with both of these companies, but I'd have to give the edge to Coca-Cola for brand iconicness, if that's a thing. But that's my own subjective opinion, so enough with that. I would also point out one easy way to get exposure to both. And yeah, it's perfectly fine to own both. You don't have to pick. You can buy SCHD, and both companies individually take up about 4% of the very popular well-known ETF. So if you own SCHD, which you probably do if you're a dividend investor, you've got some exposure to both of these companies already. And maybe you want to keep that in mind if you were thinking of opening individual positions on one or the other. Now here I have both stocks side by side using SeekingAlpha.com's Pierce feature. This is a feature that's available with their premium membership. And FYI, you can use the link in the, my description there for a 14-day free trial. See if you like it. And if you do, it's one nice way you can help support the work we do here. So as far as Coke and Pepsi goes, these are both mega huge companies. They're massive, both sitting at over a quarter of a billion dollar market cap. Coca-Cola being a little bit larger. Next, we have this chart here comparing the two, their prices. Now, Coca-Cola is the orange line, Pepsi is the blue line. Now, year to date, Pepsi has been growing in share price of about 5.5%, while Coca-Cola has pretty much been trading flat, with a return around less than minus 1%. But the short term means nothing to dividend investors like us. What have we gotten holding on to these guys for 10 years? Let's look at this in terms of total return. That's price depreciation plus dividends paid out. In this case, Pepsi has been the clear winner with a total return of around 191%, while your total return from Coca-Cola is around 110%. You've done good with either, but far better with Pepsi. Meanwhile, in both cases, you underperformed the S&P 500, which has a total return of nearly 227% over the last decade. Here you can see Coca-Cola versus the S&P 500, with the S&P more than doubling Coke's return. And here is Pepsi. It's held up a lot better versus the broad market but look you don't really own either of these necessarily to quote unquote beat the market stocks like these are a place long thought of as defensive and reliable and they hold up better in bear markets and they're for dividend investors income so i don't put too much into the s p comparison but i do think it's worth putting out there knowing the facts right now scrolling down we have ratings from seeking alpha quant rates coca-cola a buy and pepsi a hold seeking alpha analysts rate coca-cola and pepsi a hold on both Wall Street analysts rate both stocks a buy. Now scrolling down, we can see some more grades given up by Quant. These are relative to their sector. They look pretty similar for both companies. Poor valuation metrics for both, very common. Both Pepsi and Coke are traditionally quote-unquote expensive stocks that investors are going to pay a premium to own. It's not often you're going to find these stocks trading at valuations that look appealing. It's something you have to accept buying stocks like these. But these trade expensive because they're some of the top brands in the world, and there's some certainty and reliability to their, their cash flows. Now, here's a look at the companies in terms of their dividends. Coca-Cola yielding slightly more than Pepsi, a 3% yield versus that 2.72%. Both stocks trading right in line with their four-year average yield. So that's about average for them. Their payout ratios look decent for both. 
Coca-Cola's dividend takes up 70% of earnings, while Pepsi takes up 65 This would be high for a lot of businesses, but for consumer packaged goods, food and beverage companies, it's really not bad. From a dividend growth perspective, Pepsi is performing stronger. So while you are getting a little more yield out of Coke, you're getting more superior dividend growth from Pepsi. The five-year compound annual growth rate for Coca-Cola is 3.44%, while Pepsi is about double that, 7.12%. This means essentially that on average, Coca-Cola's dividend went up by about 3.44% every year over the last five years, and Pepsi went up a little over 7% annually. Now, Coca-Cola has been paying a growing dividend for 60 years, and Pepsi has been doing this for 50 years, becoming a dividend king in this last year. Impressive to think these companies have been doing this before myself, and many of us were even a thought. Going to make a couple more comparisons using Simply Safe dividends. Coca-Cola gets a dividend safety score of 80, while Pepsi comes out ahead with a dividend safety score of 93. Now, if we look at respect to their shares outstanding over the last 10 years, we remember we prefer to see these graphs go down or at least stay flat. Issuing shares by these kinds of companies is usually not a good sign. Neither company here is diluting their shareholders, but Pepsi, again, is doing a better job returning value to shareholders as it's reduced its outstanding shares by a larger percentage than Coca-Cola over the last decade. From a revenue perspective, Pepsi's revenues have gone up from $66.4 billion in 2013 to $90.1 billion over the last 12 months, while Coca-Cola's revenues are down from where they were 10 years ago. They brought in $46.9 billion in revenue in 2013. In the last 12 months, they brought in $43.5 billion, but it does look like it's trending in the right direction over the last few years. Both companies are doing well on their return on invested capital. Coca-Cola at 17%, Pepsi at 19%. Pepsi is a little bit higher leverage than Coca-Cola with a net debt to capital of 68%, while Coca-Cola is at 52%. Look, companies with a high dependence on debt to fund their operations can be more likely to run into trouble if their business conditions were to weaken. Much like your own household. Say you're drowning in debt, you have a whole bunch of massive student loans, and then you get sick and you lose your job. You know, things get ugly fast. So I'll give you guys my fair value for both companies, but real quick, I did want to look at a couple polls I took on social media. Now, I pulled my Twitter followers and YouTube subscribers, you all, and on which dividend stock you preferred, Coke or Pepsi. And I got a lot of people saying they preferred both, very common, but I was really trying to get you to pick one or the other if you could only own one. And here is how this came out. I didn't interject my own opinion into it at all. Now, Twitter first, my poll got 505 votes, and the final results were extremely close you might have thought this was an American you know, election. This is 48.3% of the votes went to Coca-Cola and 51.7% of them went to Pepsi. So Pepsi is the slight preference out of my Twitter audience. And then I posed the same question to my YouTube audience. And as of the time I'm putting this together, I have 780 votes. And in this poll, Pepsi won by a much greater lead, 56% to Coca-Cola's 44%. I found that interesting. A common response on both platforms was Coca-Cola for the taste and Pepsi for the stock, and I am with that 100%. Now, I own Pepsi myself, and I consider it a top five buy-and-hold dividend stock. Not to throw any shade at Coca-Cola, but as we've seen comparing these two companies, one has been doing this thing a little bit better than the other. And as I stated, both of these companies almost always trade at a premium. You won't hear about these stocks being cheap or undervalued, right? These are not those kind of stocks, but I did want to give, do some valuations anyway to get an idea of what fair value is for both of these, giving myself an idea of when I'd add to my Pepsi position when I'm looking at opportunities to do so, and where I would be looking to open a position in Coca-Cola. Now, when you get to a valuation of a stock, there's really no one perfect method, right? So what I do is I take the average of six different valuation estimates. And if these are all possible to calculate, and this will give me a fair value, with that I can then apply a margin of safety to that, to that value to determine an acceptable buy price. Now these are very subjective. And for stocks like these, it's very unlikely that either these are going to get that close to their fair value, but anything is possible in a stock market as we've seen. Now, I'll run through these valuations quick. I do plan on making more videos on how I'm coming up with these in the future. Now, understand that this requires me to make some projections, educated guesses on where things will go with these companies. And I could be way off on these. I could also have a calculation off on these spreadsheets. So, you know, just take these as they are. Definitely not investment advice. Let's start here with Coca-Cola. Ticker KO, we have a share price currently at $62.39. An annual dividend of $1.84, yielding 2.95%. Ford PE of 23.3% and forward earnings per share of $2.65. Now for Graham's revised valuation, assuming a 6% growth rate, 
using the current 4.65% yield for 20-year AAA bonds, I'm getting an estimated fair value of $32.60. And for my dividend discount model valuation, we have a historical five-year growth rate of 4%. I'm going to assume that going forward with a 9% discount rate, and that's going to give us an estimated fair value of $38.27 by the dividend discount model or the Gordon growth model. And as for my discounted cash flow evaluation, I take the current free cash flow, we're going to assume a 4% growth rate for the next five years, followed by a perpetual growth rate of 2.5% and a discount rate of 9%. This gives us an estimated fair value of $40.71. Now the next few valuations are relative to historical norms. The first is a dividend yield theory valuation. Now if Coca-Cola was trading at a five-year at its five-year average dividend yield of 3.07%, it would be trading at $59.93. So we're overvalued by dividend yield theory just a little bit right now. The next is a PE mean reversion valuation, which tells us that if Coca-Cola was be, to be trading at its five-year average PE of 24.2, it would be worth $64.13 per share today. Now finally, I'll factor in the average analyst price target, and today that is $69.24. So that's being generous to this valuation. Factoring all that together, this gives us an estimated fair value of $50.81. This would require an 18% drop from where it's at today, so highly unlikely it drops to this level any time in the near future. So let me give you an idea of some different entry points if you are long-term here. So at $56.61, you're getting Coke at a 3.25% starting yield, at which point it's sitting nicely above its five-year average. And at $52.57, you're getting Coke at a 3.5% yield, which would be a steep discount in terms of dividend yield theory. So at those levels, I think Coke would look pretty damn appealing. Now, I wouldn't have a problem buying the company today at this price per se for the long haul, for your long term. I just think there's a lot better opportunities right now. I'd probably be looking to get at least a 3.25% starting yield if I was to start buying Coca-Cola. But I'm also pretty happy with my exposure to it in the SCHD position I'm building up. Now for PepsiCo, ticker PEP. Share price is at $1.8930. We have an annual dividend of $5.60 with a current yield of 2.67%. A forward PE ratio of 23.9. And I've input a forward earnings per share of $7.79. For Graham's revised valuation, I'm assuming an 8% growth rate. This gives us an estimate fair value of $110.57. For my dividend discount model valuation, we have a historical five-year CAGR of 7%. I'm going to assume going forward we get a dividend growth rate averaging around 6%. Using a 9% discount rate, this gives us a valuation of $178.79, so not too far off from there. Next is the discounted cash flow, and I'm going to assume a 5% growth rate over the next five years with a 2.5% perpetual growth rate and a 9% discount rate, giving us an estimated fair value of $90.94. Next up is dividend yield theory valuation. The five-year historical average yield is 2.84%. If Pepsi were trading at this yield today, shares would be $178.17. Moving along, we have a PE mean reversion valuation. If Pepsi were to trade at its average PE of 24.0, which it's very close to right now, it would be, it would be priced at $186.96. Now also factor in that average analyst price target of $200.67. Bringing that all together, we have an estimated fair value of $157.68, which would require a 17% drop in share price for Pepsi to hit this level. So again, it doesn't look like we're going to be there anytime too soon. Of course, you never know what could happen. Where would I be adding to this position? Well, I'd like to see Pepsi at a 3% yield or higher, would nicely put it above its five-year average. So we're talking under 170 about $168.66. I would probably add a share or two to my position if it dropped there. Now, if I had to buy one or more today, of course, it would be Pepsi, but that's me. It's higher conviction. What about you? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for sticking around, and I do appreciate your continued support as our channel is about to cross 17,000 subs. That just blows my mind, guys. Now, if you want to see the stock I'm selling, and actually, I just sold out of it earlier today, click into this next video, and you'll see why I'm selling it and what I'm going to be replacing it with. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, keep investing.